Hello, my name is Jackie Elliott. I'm consultant in Sheffield and these are my disclosures. And today I'm talking about the effect of bolus insulin on glucose levels and how best to use the freestyle lever in order to adjust your bolus insulin and understand the factors which might mean that you need to change the amount of bolus insulin that you would normally give. So what's the role of bolus insulin? It's twofold. Firstly, it's to cover the glucose rise whenever you eat or drink carbohydrate. And for this to work well, you need to know what the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is throughout the day. It might be the same throughout the day, but quite a few people need more insulin in the morning, so they might be on one and a half units per 10 grams or one and a half units per CP, and then only one unit per 10 grams for lunch and dinner. So it could be the same or it could vary. The second job of bolus insulin is to bring down a higher glucose level. So this factor is often called the correction factor or the insulin sensitivity factor. And for most people, they find that one unit of insulin will lower their glucose by two or three. And again, it may or may not vary throughout the day. One thing that sometimes patients forget is really that bolus insulin does take three to four hours to have its full effect. So although they're meant to be rapid, they're not absorbed as rapidly as normal physiology, and you do have to give the insulin time to actually work. So we need to assess two different things. Firstly, we're going to look at the insulin to carbohydrate ratio. When you're trying to work out if your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is correct, you need to look at a meal time where you've got your glucose within range as you're going into that meal. So in this example, at six o'clock in the evening, the glucose is nice and stable and within target. And if you give the right amount of bolus insulin, then it should cover the carbohydrate eaten at that time and three to four hours later, bring your glucose back down to a similar level. This assumes that you've uh, calculated the amount of carbohydrate correctly, as well as the ratio itself being correct. If your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too low, and in this example it's in the evening, then the glucose level doesn't return back into the target range. So this, this time it's in the evening time, and if you don't check your glucose prior to going to bed, then it will be high all night. So in this example, the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too low. Obviously, this could also happen if you've underestimated the amount of carbohydrate in the evening meal, or if you've gone on and had a snack after the evening meal. So it is okay to snack after an evening meal, but if you do that, then you need some insulin in order to stop the glucose rising. So in this example, they've injected uh, for the meal at about midday, but then they've had a snack at three o'clock and the glucose has risen again. So you have two choices. You can either choose to give an extra injection to cover that snack, or if you regularly snack, in this example, mid-afternoon, then you would add on the carbohydrate content uh, of that snack to the lunchtime ratio. If the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too high, then you find that you'll be hypoglycemic uh, after those particular meals. And in this example, it's again the evening meal. So if your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too high, then you could run the risk of being hypo all night, unless you've done a check if you've scanned prior to going to bed. This example shows one of the AGPs. AGPs are good for looking at trends, but you need to look at individual days before you make treatment decisions. So if you look at this graph, you can see that the median goes high from about 11 o'clock in the morning through most of the day before it drops uh, just before going to bed. If you look at individual days, it gives you a better idea of what might need to change. So in both these examples, the user starts the day with good glucose. They then have breakfast, but the glucose doesn't come back down to the normal range. It stays higher than it was before, indicating that the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is set too low. They're not giving enough insulin for the carbohydrate at breakfast. Once it's high by lunchtime and they snack again, it doesn't come back down into range. So it could be that the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is incorrect at lunch, or it could be that actually their correction factor isn't right. In the evening, we have two different evenings in this example. So in the top trace, you can see that they're within range, and so the insulin to carbohydrate ratio in the evening is probably correct. 
but in the bottom one, they weren't in range when they went into an evening meal, so perhaps the correction factor isn't right at that time. The other thing to know about bolus insulin is when should you inject it? So this example here shows very clearly when the patient or the user is uh, injecting their bolus insulin and eating. So at about seven o'clock in the morning, seven to eight o'clock in the morning, they're having uh, their breakfast, injecting their bolus insulin, and it does come back down into range by lunchtime. They then have their lunch, and again, the glucose rises and comes back down to range by about four o'clock. The timing of the evening meal does vary somewhat in this example. So when should you bolus? If you bolus at the time of eating, and I'm sure you've already noticed this, that the glucose will go up, and it may go up more than you actually realised that it did before you were wearing a, a Freestyle Libra. So what we're trying to do overall is reduce the amount of time that your glucose is high. And so mostly people would say try to avoid your glucose going above 10. In this example, we've shaded the area in dark blue where it's above 10. So the ratio itself is right, but there is a big peak and it does go over 10. Over time, this will impact on your HbA1c. So what should you do? Ideally, you should bolus before you eat. And most people say at least 15 minutes, you might find that it needs to be 20 minutes or even 30 minutes. And if you can get into regularly uh, doing this, you'll find that the peak is not as big and you may not even go above 10 at all. Sometimes it's not possible to do this, but if you can get into a morning routine where you can do this and a lunchtime routine, then even if you're doing it two out of the three times a day, it will help your glucose control overall. And in this example, we can't tell whenever the user is eating and bolusing. They are managing to bolus pre-meal the vast majority of the time and their glucose remains very stable. So what about the correction factor? Correction factor is used to lower a higher glucose. So in this example, the user has woken up at 8 o'clock in the morning with a high glucose of around 15. They've injected 5 units and that's brought the glucose back down into a more normal range. Their glucose has dropped from 15 down to 5. And so by injecting 5 units, you can see that each one unit has lowered their glucose by 2. Their correction factor is 2. Their insulin sensitivity factor is 2. So what we've done there is look at the expected drop, and that equals the correction factor times by the number of units given. Bolus advisors will have a target blood glucose already pre-programmed in them. So in this example, the target blood glucose would have been 5, the blood glucose was 15. You divide it by the correction factor and you end up with 5 units. But if you look at this equation, you'll see that if the correction factor is set too low, then because we're dividing by the correction factor, you'll end up giving even more corrective insulin. The danger of that is that you can become hypoglycemic. So if when you correct, you find that you're going hypoglycemic often, it means your correction factor is set too low. This patient also woken up with a glucose of 15 in the morning. They injected five units because they thought that each unit would drop their glucose by two, but in fact, each unit has dropped their glucose by 2.5. Their total drop is 12.5. The problem with this is that over time, you'll end up treating uh, hypos more often, consuming more calories than you actually need, and this can, in the longer term, lead to weight gain. Obviously, having more hypos than you really need can also impair your warnings of hypoglycemia in the long term. So it is something worth sorting out. So when should you correct? For people on pen therapy, we suggest that mostly they correct three to four hours after the last injection of quick-acting insulin. So most people would do a check before a meal and see if it's high, and then they would add it on to the injection that they're about to do for the meal. In this example, you can see that they've given an injection when the glucose is high, but in fact, the insulin from the first injection is still working. And so the two combined together have made the glucose drop too much and they've become hypoglycemic. This phenomenon is called insulin stacking. And if you stack the injections too close together, then you can end up with hypoglycemia. One way to avoid this is with a bolus advisor, which can calculate how much of the previous insulin injection is still active 
i.e. the insulin that's still active on board. Even when you've done all that, there will be times when your blood glucose is turbulent and there will be times when you need to alter your bolus insulin requirements. So you will need to lower the bolus insulin requirements if you've exercised or if you're about to exercise, if you've drank alcohol or indeed if you're planning to drink a lot of alcohol or if you've had a recent hypo. In other scenarios, if you know that you're feeling stressed or you're ill or high fat meals, you will need to increase the bolus insulin. And then we know that if your carbohydrate counting isn't that accurate, you're going to have turbulent glucose levels anyway. So some situations are more difficult to bolus for than others. But there are some simple rules that you can follow. So if you remember, you can reduce the mealtime bolus if you know that you're going to exercise or if you've already done some exercise and you're planning to eat. The meals either side, if they're within an hour or two of the exercise, then you could start by halving the ratio. Similarly, if you've drank alcohol, you will need to decrease the ratio or if you've had a recent hypo. There are times when you need to increase the bolus insulin. And so we would suggest that you increase the bolus insulin by 10 to 20% if you're feeling stressed, ill, premenstrual, or for some people, they do need to increase the amount of bolus insulin with high fat meals. And there's more about this in another one of the modules. But most people would need to increase their bolus insulin by let's say 25 to 65%. Uh, some people then would give half the amount at the beginning and half an hour later. But overall, the requirements will be higher than normal. So in conclusion, using the Freestyle Libra, I think it really helps you to see the effect of different foods on blood glucose and it helps you bolus more accurately. If you bolus 15 to 20 minutes before each meal, you will see that the peaks uh, in glucose will be smaller. You may need to bring the bolus insulin further back from the meal. You need to trust this out for yourself. By doing this, you will increase the time in range between 4 and 10 and your HP and A1C will improve. If you find that your glucose is always high after a meal, then that suggests that your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too low, assuming that your basal insulin isn't too low. If you're often hyper at the same time of day when you're in target pre-meal, this suggests that your insulin to carb ratio is too high, assuming your basal insulin is not too high. And it's always best to look for patterns before you change a ratio or before you change an insulin sensitivity factor, correction factor. And for some people, if you find that there are no regular patterns, then it's always best to go back to carbohydrate, carbohydrate counting and check that things are accurate. By spending time working out the correct insulin to carbohydrate ratio and working out the different correction factors possibly throughout the day, then you, you'll find that you are injecting the right amount of Berlis insulin on a more regular basis. Thank you.